Hi there, this is Jennifer over at Decor Sauce, and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to refinish a chair basically from soup to nuts. Um, if you read my blog, you know that I love thrifting, but the problem with thrift store chairs is that they're usually pretty filthy. Um, in the case of the chairs that are sitting here behind me and the projects that I'm going to be doing today, the bones are in really great shape, but the, the um, actual fabric on the seat leaves a lot to be desired. So the purpose of the video today is to kind of take some of the intimidation for you out of the process of upholstery. It's really quite easy and I really do believe that anyone can do it. So what I'm going to do is give you a closer look at the chairs and after that we'll go through the process together. So here are the chairs I'm going to be reupholstering for you for this tutorial and as you can see the seat cushion just lays on top of the frame. That's a really good indication of what kind of upholstery project that, that it is. And this is a super easy one. This is great for beginners because it doesn't require a whole lot of skill. This is actually what the underside of the chair looks like. As you can see, here are where the screws um, connect the seat base into the frame, top and bottom. There are usually four, sometimes five, if it's been stripped previously. And all you need to do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and just loosen those screws. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you take off the seat cushion. So I have flipped it upside down and removed all the screws, and now I have two different pieces. This is actually the seat bottom right here. And as you can see, this is how it basically the fabric was originally ap applied. And you're not going to do something too much different than this. Um, generally, I like to remove the original fabric on these chairs simply because well, for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's usually pretty filthy. Um, also, having the original fabric as a pattern is really helpful when you're cutting a new piece of fabric. On something like this, that's it's not a really complicated design though, it's really easy to put a new piece of fabric right over the top of this one. Um, so probably what I'll do in this circumstance, just because it's really nice and tight and it seems like the foam and everything underneath is in really good condition, I'll probably just reupholster this seat cushion right with the original fabric on it. Um, you can't do that really if your holes are tight underneath because you're going through several layers of fabric when you put the screws back on, but in this case I think I'll be fine. The original fabric is not really super thick um, and I think I, can, I think I can work with it the way it is. Although I do, next what I'm doing is I'm taking this thing outside. I did find this guy inside so that's pretty disgusting and now what I'm gonna do is take it outside and give it a nice cleaning then I'm gonna spray paint it and then then while it's drying I'm gonna move on to the actual upholstery part of this project okay so now I'm going to clean off my chairs and what I have is a bucket of water it's about a gallon of water in there and then some TSP substitute solution and it looks like this and you pick it up at the hardware store and it's got the handy dandy measurements right on the side to tell you how much to pour in per gallon of water. So I've already mixed my water, my TSP, and I'm just gonna use that scrub brush to scrub all the little nooks and crannies on my rattan chairs. Okay, so I've already taken my um, frame outside and cleaned and painted it. And now while it's drying, I'm going to cut the pattern for my seat cushion. Now I've selected an outdoor fabric because these chairs are gonna be going outside on my patio. And it does have a bit of a pattern, so I do wanna be conscious of the way the pattern is gonna go on the chair cushion. Since I did not remove the original fabric from this chair cushion, I don't have it to use as a pattern. So what I'm gonna do is just lay out my seat on top of the fabric and then kind of check it and make sure that it's going to cover on each side and then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut all the way around the edge just so I don't have a lot of excess fabric left over. Now I do have a pair of special scissors that I use specifically for upholstery for fabric. You never want to use scissors that cut paper for fabric because uh, paper dulls scissors and then you won't get a clean edge and as you can see here we've already got some fraying happening with this material. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut all the way around this leaving at least a two inch edge all the way around just to make sure that my fabric can wrap um, safely around the chair cushion. 
Since I have two chair cushions that I'm going to do, I've already cut out, as you can see, this first piece. But since I have two chair cushions, I'm gonna just use this as a pattern for my next chair piece. And then that way I don't have to worry about having two different sizes. So I'm just gonna line those two up. I'm just gonna use the first one as a pattern. Now that my pieces are all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and upholster it. Now when you look at the chair cushion, remember that this is going to be the front of the chair and this is going to be the back. So on my particular pattern, it doesn't matter because it's all the same, but on some patterns, you'll want to make sure that you put it on the right way, depending on the look that you want. And I also um, like to know where the chair frame attaches to the seat and I try not to cover up those holes with fabric. And on this chair, there, there's one here, one here, and then one here on both sides. And so when I wrap my fabric around, I'm gonna wanna make sure, I didn't cut this one so long that it's gonna be a, um, it's gonna really matter, but in the back it might, it might matter here. And I just wanna make sure that I know where those holes are so that I don't either put a staple into them or cover them up. It's harder to, find them later if um, they're covered up with fabric. So I'm just gonna be careful not to do that when I do it to begin with. I like to, sometimes I like to tack a staple here, maybe one on the top and one on the bottom, and then I like to lift up my chair cushion just to make sure that I like the way the pattern is laying before I secure the whole thing with staples. I just don't want it to, to look cockeyed or off kilter, and I wanna make sure that everything is nice and lined up. So I'll probably, I'm gonna go ahead and tack one in here. And then also I'm gonna tack one in to the back. Now you might like to tuck it, sometimes I do, just it gives it a nice cleaner edge, especially if you have some excess fabric and you have a little bit of leeway to sort of tuck some up under. So I'm gonna tuck that up under and then just be careful. Here are my holes where my chair frame attaches to the seat and I wanna make sure not to cover those up with fabric because I wanna find them later. So now that I've secured a couple of staples just to hold that fabric on there, I'm gonna lift it up and make sure that I like the way that it looks and that it's nice and straight. And it looks good to me. So I'm gonna keep going all the way around the perimeter and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And this is what it looks like when it's done. As you can see by the corners, I get all the way up to the corner and then I fold it over and then just attach down all of the, some of the larger flaps. Being careful to leave my holes here where it goes into the frame exposed. That way I can find them when I attach the seat back to the chair frame. And this is what the front looks like. Here is what the chair looks like when it's once it's completely finished with the seat cushion reattached. As you can see, I've added these two chairs to the other two that were already on my patio. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website at www.decorsauce.com for other DIY and tutorials.